Hey y'all, welcome to a new dinner video. Jumping right on in, first up we had breakfast for dinner. So I made some pork chop and gravy biscuits. These Mary Bee biscuits are our absolute favorite. And of course you could use any pork chops that you want to, but if you are local, these Uncle Charlie's pork chops are the absolute best. I don't know what they do to them, but they are the most tender, it is the best pork chops I've ever had. Like, nothing compares. And I also really like how their package makes it really convenient to thaw out. And while I was at Save a Lot, I came across this, like, already made sausage gravy. And it comes in the freezer section. You just thaw it out and you can pop it in the microwave or just heat it up on the stovetop. So, it really had me curious. So, I figured we could try it together, see if it's worth buying again. So, of course, I started by putting my biscuits in the oven, and now I am just seasoning my pork chops. I went really simple since it's just like for a breakfast biscuit. So, I'm doing some Malari's seasoned salt and black pepper. So, I have some olive oil heated up in my skillet on about medium-high heat. Once it was really hot, I added my pork chops seasoned side down, and now I'm just going to take the opportunity to season the other side the same way. And yes, I'm extremely stuffy right now. Uh, it's just that time of year, guys. I apologize. But yeah, so I cook these for a few minutes on each side. Got a really nice sear on it. And I'm just going to place that on my biscuit. Followed by a good spoonful of that gravy. And y'all, I was impressed. Like, this is really close tasting to homemade. And I just think it's a really good option. Definitely would buy it again. So I also made some air fryer like breakfast potatoes. This is one of our favorite side dishes. I've made it many, many times and it's always a hit. We all love them. So I just take some russet potatoes. I leave the skins on, wash them of course, chop them up and then I just drizzle them with some olive oil and I season them with whatever I'm feeling that day. So on this day, I did some lorries again, uh, some paprika, onion and garlic powder, threw it in my air fryer and I usually cook it around 400 degrees, anywhere from like 20 to 25 minutes and you always want to shake it about halfway through or else they'll stick but as you can see they turn out nice and crispy and they're always like super soft on the inside just delicious I also made some cheesy scrambled eggs and I did a side of strawberries and these were the best strawberries I have bought in a long long time you can just tell by looking at them but those pork chop biscuits y'all oh my goodness I'm obsessed I have not stopped thinking about these since I made them so it's definitely going to be a regular the next night we had tostadas. So the first thing I'm gonna get started is some homemade refried beans. So what I'm dumping out here is actually some leftover soup beans that I made a couple videos back. I just froze the leftovers and thawed them out and I'm just heating them up in this pan. So now I'm just simply taking a potato masher and I'm mashing up most of those beans, not all of them. I'm just gonna keep on doing that until it reaches the consistency that we prefer. So these soup beans were already seasoned really well, uh, but I wanted to kinda Add a few things to make it go with the dish better. So I did add in some chili powder and some cumin. And I always like to add a spoonful of sour cream to my refried beans, whether it's canned, homemade, whatever. I just really like the creaminess that it adds and the taste. Sometimes I'll add cheese too, but for whatever reason, I didn't on this day. But that was it. I just let it simmer for like five minutes. And to me, that is perfect. So I'm just going to add a lid and I'm going to scoot it on back and get started on the meat. So here is one pound of some 80-20 ground beef and I'm just getting that broken apart. Every time I use this tool, I get questions. I did get mine from Pampered Chef, but I know that you can get them cheaper pretty much anywhere now. It's pretty popular. Um, but yeah, so I just browned up that ground beef and drained off the grease and now I'm just getting it seasoned. So we got quite a bit of things going on here. We got some salt, pepper, onion and garlic powder, chili powder, cumin, paprika, and oregano. So basically like a homemade taco packet. Um, and I say this every time that I try to be that mom that makes the homemade taco seasoning. I would just be happier if I used a packet. It tasted good, don't get me wrong, but as you can see, it's just kind of like dry and crumbly. I guess I should have added in some salsa, but I guess I wasn't thinking, but oh well. For the toppings, we have some shredded lettuce, some diced tomatoes, some avocado and lime wedges, some queso fresco, some sour cream, and hot sauce. It's not often that I dirty up that many dishes just for toppings, but kind of made me feel like I had my life together for a few minutes, not gonna lie.
think that these turned out gorgeous, very eye-pleasing. We have actually never done tostadas before. The only thing that I've ever used on shelves for in the past was for like homemade Crunchwrap Supremes. I know that this is basically just like an open face taco, but you could definitely fit on more toppings this way. And it's definitely pretty messy to eat, but I think that it's nice to take things that you already love and just present it in a different way. It did turn out really good. The next day was dinner at my parents and my dad made this delicious meal. We've got some ham, rolls, mashed potatoes, mac and cheese, and his famous vegetable casserole. I have been craving some buffalo wings, so I had to make it happen, and they are so, so easy to make in an air fryer. So I did have to like cut them up myself, which is kind of a pain, but I did that earlier that morning. That way, when it was dinner time, I could just slap them in the air fryer basket, and it would go super quick. Uh, and as you seen, I did take a paper towel, and I pat dried those, and I'm just lightly seasoning them with the Lari Season Salt and black pepper. I didn't even bother seasoning the other side, which really you should, but it's going to get coated in that flavorful buffalo sauce, so I don't really care, but I like to do it at 380 degrees for 25 minutes. You definitely want to make sure to give those a good shake so that the other side can get crispy as well and so that they don't stick, and then I'm just going to pop those back in for a final five minutes at 400 degrees and they should come out super crispy like all around and the meat should be nice and juicy these turn out so so good every single time i make them this way so as you can see i just got those in a good size mixing bowl and i was gonna do like a homemade buffalo sauce but then i was like why would i have this frank's buffalo sauce i love that stuff use it all the time i think that it's perfect just the way it is and we like the spice level because it's not like overly spicy and you know my husband who can't really tolerate spice can enjoy these as well so yeah i just tossed those around and these turned out so so delicious they definitely hit the spot they turned out perfect. And I just served it with some french fries and some carrot sticks, and I did make some homemade ranch. I pretty much just follow the Hidden Valley recipe for that, except I use buttermilk instead of regular milk. So I do a cup of buttermilk, a cup of mayo, and a packet of the Hidden Valley ranch seasoning mix. And if you've never done it that way before, it is so amazing. It is just like your favorite restaurant's ranch recipe. But yeah, this meal was just so good. We loved it. It's definitely one of our favorites. You can probably tell by looking at these ingredients what I'm about to say, but we did some KFC bowls. This is one of those nights where I had no idea what to cook, didn't feel like going to the store, so this is the first thing that popped up in my head. And just to be honest, I almost didn't even put this in this video because right after this, I got hit with a stomach bug and then everyone else got the stomach bug. So I didn't even really want to look at this right now, but after that, we all got hit with the flu, which is why I sound the way I sound and why I haven't uploaded in a couple of weeks. But yeah, on a normal occasion, this is usually a favorite. is definitely a budget-friendly meal which is always nice and I just feel like it's one of those meals that most people would like. I bought this rack of ribs back in November and it's just been chilling in my deep freezer and I've just been saving it until it sounded really good so now is the time. As you can see I got this for less than ten dollars. Anytime I can find it on sale like that I like to grab a pack and just save it uh, but the first thing I'm going to do is put together this seasoning blend. So it's a quarter cup of brown sugar, a tablespoon of paprika, garlic powder, onion powder, and chili powder, a teaspoon of cumin, a little bit of cayenne pepper, a teaspoon of black pepper, and two teaspoons of some sea salt. So I was going to get that mixed together real quick. And of course, I will have this recipe linked in my description box. Uh, I have a few different like favorite recipes for ribs, but this is my favorite Instant Pot version. It is super good. Um, so the first thing that you want to do with the ribs is to always remove the membranes. Uh, normally I can do this pretty easily, but I was like struggling with this rack for whatever reason, but usually you just kind of pick like the middle part and pull it up and it usually comes off in one piece like fairly easily. I don't know what was going on with this like right side, but 
it was being funky. I just kind of left it alone. But as you can see, I'm just taking a paper towel and I'm just pat drying like both sides. And now I'm going to take that seasoning blend and I'm just going to like evenly distribute it between like both sides. And you want to make sure to like really rub it in and pat it in so that it will stick. Um, it is like a little bit tricky to get it to stick. But like I said, if you just keep on pressing it in, it should all work out. But as you can see, that is like a lot of spices. So this is definitely like not lacking in flavor whatsoever. It's a really, really good seasoning blend. Um, so to my Instant Pot, you're going to do a quarter cup of apple cider vinegar. And then normally you'll need one and a quarter cup of apple juice, which I much prefer that way, but I didn't have any. I have not been as organized with my meal planning lately and grocery shopping, but I had to improvise. So I just did water and a little bit of this beef bouillon powder, uh, just because I didn't want to do like straight up water. So yeah, um, I also have the little, I can't think what that's called right now, but that little insert at the bottom and I just placed my ribs on top, added my lid and I made sure my valve was set to ceiling and I'm going to let this cook on, pretty sure it was 24 minutes. But yeah, anywhere from like 23 to 24 minutes, depending on like how like fatty your ribs are and I let it natural release for five minutes and then I release the rest of the pressure. So this is what they looked like. As soon as they were done, and you're just going to transfer those to a foil-lined cookie sheet. And then you'll want to grab some of your favorite barbecue sauce. I'm going with a Sweet Baby Ray's Honey Barbecue Sauce. And you'll just use as little or as much as you want to. And, you know, if you're not really huge on barbecue sauce, you can even eat these, like, without it. The dry rub alone would be delicious. But I'm just getting that spread on with my brush. And I'm just going to pop that under the broiler for about five minutes. Just so that barbecue sauce can, like, caramelize to it. And as you can see, they turned out so good. Like, that looks amazing. They look perfect. And they're going to be just fall off the bone tender. It's so juicy. I always struggle with making, like, boneless ribs. But anytime I make them bone in like this, I'm always super proud to serve them. It's always just such a hit. Uh, but for the sides, I just have a baked potato on this night. I did simple. I just did some salt, pepper, butter and sour cream and not shown but of course I coated it in A1 sauce and also made a side of like broccoli and cheese sauce but that is going to wrap up this video if you made it this far thank you so much for watching I hope you all have the best weekend and I will see you on my next video bye guys